I want to introduce uh, Tracy Walton. She is a representative of the Leadership Development Committee. Uh, Tracy is very experienced in GoToWebinar, and I think some of her colleagues wished for her to do this presentation. So I'm honored to have her on the line now, and I'll turn the floor over to Tracy. Thank you, Pete. How is my volume, people? Very good. You could turn it down maybe just a hair. Okay. Is that a little bit better? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be representing the Leadership Development Committee here at the annual business meeting, and it's been an honor to work with the committee in the first place. It's been a wonderful organization to work with. So you can see the members of the Leadership Development Committee up here. Um, including our chair, Deborah Curtis, and our board liaison, Krista Fredhantoro. And what I'm going to do is give you a short report on the leadership development activities with a real emphasis on the slates, two slates that we are putting forward in this year's election. So if I could have the next slide, please. It tells what we're up to on the leadership development committee. We have basically three tasks, and I think... Um, um, yeah, we have three tasks. One is to develop the slate for the board of the direct board of directors and conduct the election, and that will be the focus of my presentation in a minute. And a second is to populate the alliance committees, and a third is to support the alliance leadership as needed. We some of us have organizational experience, and 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 folks on the ed, on the executive committee or the board may ask us, or various committees may ask us for help or advice at times. So we've offered advice on setting up of the um, governance and strategic planning committees and, and, and things like that. It's pretty casual advice and it's uh, available on request. And next, on this next slide, I'm going to um, discuss how the LDC conducts elections, what the process is like. Um, we um, it's really a pretty extensive process, and every election begins with a needs assessment. And we interview every member of the board, not just the ones who are re-upping, but all the board members, and ask them, what are the qualities of the current sitting board? What do they uh, think the needs of the board, the strengths and weaknesses are, the needs of the board going forward, uh, their vision for the board in the future? And from that, we form an impression of what is needed. And we do that, again, with the whole board. And then we develop a slate, which is just, you know, there are two words there, develop slate. But it's a pretty extensive process. We, in, after the needs assessment, we interview, um, we, have, we find out how many openings we have. And this year, we had five openings. And we, um, when we have an open seat of you know, any open seat, we email the whole membership for candidates. And this year, um, we had um, an open seat because of the departure of Iris Berman, and we had two candidates apply for that open seat, and the other four were re-upping uh, incumbent members of the board. And we conducted lengthy interviews with everyone running for board seats, both the incumbents and, and new people. And then we make a decision to, of who to put forward. This takes a, a few months, this process. And then we communicate with the membership um, about the slate. And you have a document um, that has been emailed to you about that slate, the, a document up on the website about that slate. And then we conduct a vote. Uh, and what's special, if we can look at the next slide, what's special about this election is it's the first online election ever. It's a real milestone for us. And we considered several methods for how to conduct this election in a good way. And we decided on a two-phase election, um, the first phase of which was a, is a simple vote for the slate with an option to nominate someone else if desired for any of the open spots. Um, and then if a new nominee emerges from that that is not on the slate already, then we would have a phase two, if it turns out that way, which is an election for any contested position. That's how this election will work in this two-phase process. And um, the next slide shows the slate that we're putting forward. 
The 2014 slate for the Board of Directors includes Cherie Sonan Mo, who's um, running for the C, one of the CE provider seats, Pete Wittridge, who's running for a faculty seat, Stan Dawson, who's also running for a CE provider seat, and that phone ring was not supposed to happen. I apologize for that. And of course, I can't figure out how to do how to quiet it down very well. Um, Gloria Lawrence, who's running for an at-large seat, and Sue Bivick, who's running for the school owner slash director seat. That is our 2014 slate for the board of directors. And then we also have a slate for the leadership development committee itself, and we're putting forward Deborah Curtis, who's currently the chair of the leadership development committee, as well as Joe Lubau for that committee. So those are the two slates that we're putting forward. And then I'd like to just let you know how we staff committees, because anyone on this webinar might be interested in committee work at some point in volunteering. And um, it starts, it's, it sounds kind of crass, but this is what we do. We, stiff, we sniff around. We ask around. We look around. We rack our brains, our internal Rolodexes for all the people we know who who seem like really good people in the profession. And you know, we obviously don't think of everybody. There are just five of us. But um, we are open to any suggestions in that area. And then we identify who would be good candidates from, from that racking of brains and asking around. And if we identify someone, we reach out to them and ask about their interest and availability and kind of vet them based on an initial conversation. And then, if it seems right, refer them to an appropriate committee chair. Uh, there are lots of committees working on behalf of the Alliance, and what I'm going to tell you about in the next slide is all of the people we put, um, that we referred to committees on the next slide. The 2013, between then and now, the last half of 2013 and the first half of 2014, the referrals are as follows. We referred five new people to the membership committee, the five new people to the strategic planning committee, Three for the Governance Committee, which is a brand new committee, actually. Uh, one to the Finance Committee, and one to the Conference, or it should be probably Congress Planning Committee. Um, and so that's who we let, we basically make that referral and tell the committee chairs about that. On that list, I would say that the Finance Committee shows the greatest need at this time, and I think Eric has agreed with me on this point. And so I'm here to ask you if you know anyone with administrative finance experience who's pretty good with the numbers and um, keeping an eye on that, as well as kind of shares the heart and soul of massage therapy work, does not, you know, that is involved in massage therapy education. We need two people to complete that committee. And if you have any interest in that or you think of someone who might be interested in that, uh, please do contact the LDC. You can email us at nominations at afmte.org. That's our greatest need at this time, but we're always interested in hearing from people who are thinking they might want to serve on a committee. So if I can have the next slide, please. The next slide. If you are interested in committee work, you can be interested in short-term or long-term volunteering. There, there are a couple of different options. Um, if you're interested in something over a longer term, a year or two or more, then reach out to us again at the same email that you see below to any of us on the LDC. And also, if there are other options, we have something that we loosely informally call, not, not yet, Stephanie, um, thank you. We have something we call, we loosely call the energy bank, which is, um, oh, say that you have maybe a few hours that you could devote over a month to a certain project, that, um, but you don't have the ability or inclination to, to really serve in a long-term way on a committee, you can also reach out to us for that to say, you know, um, my summers are a little bit slower, and during July and August I could probably um, devote six or eight hours or two or three hours, or I have this certain skill and I'd be happy to <clears throat> excuse me, I'd be happy to use that skill in the service of a short-term project at some time. So there's that option as well, the short-term energy bank option. Whether it's long or short-term, please email us at that email. We would love to hear from you. So that's my, um, my plea 
to the membership to let us know about that. And then finally, my last message of this report is to ask you to vote. And the Wednesday, Ju July 23rd is the deadline, so it's coming up on us pretty fast. You can check your email for election news from the Alliance or go to the website at afmte.org. And it's very nicely st done. Stephanie does a beautiful job. You can see all the bio biographical sketches of the candidates for both the board and the LDC. Um, there's even video available and their um, position statements. And um, it's a very fast process, very easy process, and a quick way to learn about who is running for the board. So please, please vote. So yes, committee work, if you're interested, tell us about it. If uh, you have something short-term you could offer, a special skill for a short time, please let us know. We'd love to hear. We have a special need for the Finance Committee, and please um, vote in this election sometime before a week from Wednesday. So thank you so much for giving me the floor. Thank you so much, Tracy. You've, you've covered a lot of material here. Thank you so much. Way to go, Tracy. Good job, and thank you for your presentation. You're welcome. Thank you. Looks like we do have one question slipped in there. Sorry, Tracy. Let me get you unmuted here. Um, is the election open now for online voting? Uh, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, it is the second phase of the election would be online voting. What was sent to you in the first phase was uh, a, a document, a ballot. Um, which you can return, and you can either vote for the slate or put another candidate forward. And then if any of the seats are contested, as in if anyone in the membership has put a candidate forward for any of the positions on the board, then we would go to an electronic um, online, online voting process in the second phase, which we would take a separate step to explain that to members and where to go um, to do that. Okay. And there was an additional question, Colonel Osborne, that I think related, but I, Tracy, I think you answered that question. Um, it was, when is the deadline for the other nominations so that phase two is activated? But it's, you know, Carol says that that was answered, so I just want to make sure we have clear communication. Yep, July 23rd for all of it, to put another candidate forward or just to submit your electronic ballot for the slate or, as I said, to put another candidate forward. So Wednesday, July 23rd. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank All you. right. All right. Thank you so much.